Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Sorry, that took a while. No, I technology, especially Zoom, is super confusing. Like it took me a while to actually understand how it works. Um, because I did the first meeting call interview thing. Um, like two weeks ago and that was the first time I used with Zoom and I was like I don't know what mm. this is I don't know how to do it and my friend was like oh this is how you do it and like told me how to do it all but man stressful times yeah no this is the first time I've used it so I didn't really know what I was doing but yeah <coughs> we made it here we are <laughs> hi everyone thank you for coming to join this nice little video that we have here and I'm going with a very nice guest here. Um, this is actually the proper first time that we've ever spoken. Yeah, no, I, I thought that was weird because we were literally doing like the same like kind of topic for our dissertation yet nobody ever like introduced us or was like, oh, by the way, Jane, this other person's like doing I know. the same subject as you. Like, even one of the tutors could be like, oh, they're doing like the exact same thing. Like, why don't you discuss like what you're doing? It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was only until one of us had posted on Instagram or something about it. Yeah. And then I can't remember who one of us reached out to one another and were like, oh, we just did the same thing. But yeah, um, I think it was me. I was literally like, oh, really? we did the same topic. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking mad. But the, the only difference was the fact that um, you were doing it in the like painting sector, whereas I was doing it in like the design and businessy yeah but pretty much the same thing looking at very similar research as well after reading your dissertation I was like this is bad but <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> yeah. it's also quite interesting because it's like yours was like a little bit from a different like perspective than mine so it's actually quite nice to read somebody else's yeah. that did like the same topic so it's a bit of a shame we didn't do it before but I know but Either way, like, it worked out quite nice because we were still able to... I think it would have ended up different if we had spoken about it, I think. Like, yeah. I think the fact that we both do have different outlooks on it, reading it, like you were saying, just makes it more interesting, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it could have added, like, a different sort of perspective, definitely, to mine. But, yeah. um, oh, well, it's done now, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I'll do your little introduction. So Jane, this is Jane. <laughs> she is a painter and she's currently based in Dumfries and Galloway, which is very fun. I went there when I was a kid um, for a summer holiday and we went to the ice cream factory. Oh, um, Cream of Galloway. Aye, that's the one. <laughs> it was great fun. The slide was the highlight, I think as well as the ice cream. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a flying fox. I used to have a flying fox. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. That was amazing. Yeah. I used to, like, climbing all the hay bales and everything, like, such a hillbilly, but it was actually amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Dream place, guys. Once this is over, go there. <laughs> Funny. And then, um, so you grew up in Dumfries and Galloway, which is very cool. Yes. And then you did your fine art HNC in air, and then got into yes. grade in 2015, and yeah. then graduated last year as well. Congratulations. Woohoo. I know, I never thought I was going to make it, but I did. Oh, it was some mad time, a real mad yeah. time. And I'm sure we'll be able to talk a little bit about that later on. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, let's just dive right in. So <laughs> what yep. is your background? Like, how did you get yourself into painting in the first place? Uh, ever since I was little, I always liked painting. Like, even like when I was at nursery, I was always like, you know how you get playtime and you have to run like straight to the like whatever toy you want to play with that I was always the only one that went to like the easel so I, I, I don't know you just like when you're in a school you're always known as like the arty person so I remember even when I was like primary school people used to come up to me and be like can you draw me a horse or can you draw me this or like whatever but like um I don't know it's kind of difficult because I always didn't really know what I wanted to do like it was always kind of a toss-up between art and music because I used to play a lot of instruments as well um 
And also my sister did like a, a degree in Belfast and she did like textile art, I think. So that kind of influenced me as well, like just the fact that my sister done it. Um, I don't know, I just always like loved painting. And then when I went to college, like I wasn't really sure, like obviously I was doing art, but I wasn't sure what exactly like in art that I wanted to do. And then my tutor was just like, like I had like the best tutors when I was at Ayrshire College. Like I would highly recommend it. Like you think Ayrshire College is like shit, but it's not, it's like really, <laughs> like the tutors were like really sound like, and they were like always really supportive and like, they're always like, oh, um, like I always felt like they were like closing a little, little like banner being like, woo, go Jane, like you can do this. Yeah. But um, they were, they were just like, oh, you're a painter, like you're, like, so I was like, oh, do I want to do design or I want to do like fine art? And they were like, no, you're a painter, like do a painting course. So that's how I knew, like, that's what I wanted to do. And then, um, like I, I applied for art school when I was at, like, I did advance higher. I applied for art school then, but, um, I don't know, the tutor was kind of like, oh, you need to build like a portfolio first and all that kind of stuff. And then, so that's how I went to Ayrshire College. And there was about, a lot of people dropped out in the class as well at Ayrshire College. Like, obviously that happened at uni as well. Like, lots of people drop out, but um, there's only maybe like 20 people left, like by the end, like in the class and about maybe 10 people out of the 20 applied for art school. And I was the only person in the class that actually got in. Wow. So, I don't know. Like, that was quite nice, but then at the same time, it's quite yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it's great for you. Like, yeah, check me out. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it was kind of sad because I wanted some of my friends to get in as well. Like, so I wasn't going to be, like, totally alone, like, going to uni. But, um, like, I still keep in contact with them and everything, so it's fine. Like, they were all, like, super sound, but. And like I, when I was in first year a lot of them tried again like applied again like I got interviews and stuff and they still didn't get in like the second time around so yeah, yeah that wasn't nice but it, like it did make me realize like oh like I'm really lucky for even just getting into art school so like I feel like I valued it more like other people like maybe didn't like take it as serious like even in first year like a lot of people didn't turn up every day and stuff whereas I was like I was maybe a bit too probably obsessive, like I have to be there like so early every day and like stuff like that. But I just like I don't know. I didn't I didn't want to waste like the opportunity kind of thing because I knew it was like important, like not everybody gets it kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think I was the same in that, yeah, I was kind of like, this is such a incredible opportunity that we're actually here, like we made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause uh, <laughs> I think I got uh, a conditional to Napier to do graphic design and then got rejected from all of them apart from Grace. But Grace was my oh. number one choice anyway. So I was open was soon. Yeah, I was yeah. like, because I, kind of similar to what you were saying about college, that um, that's how I felt about Grace. Like I really felt like they were really good at supporting you and kind of cheering you on and encouraging you to go the way that you wanted yeah. to go. Um, sometimes it just depends like what tutor you get as well like I feel like that's such an important thing like um like you can get a really bad tutor and it can just totally put you off like doing anything to do with art or whereas if you get like a really really good one it like really spurs you on like oh I really want to do this kind of thing so yeah definitely I think I yeah first year was a bit of a whirlwind because I was like oh my gosh like what am I doing yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know <laughs> And I was looking around, seeing everyone's work, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Like, I'm not as talented <laughs> as these people. I just am And then yeah. I, I was, like, on the phone to my parents, like, I think a week in, like, guys, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, I'm not creative enough. Like, these guys, I just can't do it. And they were like, Megan, yeah. you got in for a reason. Like, they can see your potential. <laughs> just, like, crack on. And, and yeah, kind of like like you, like, that's where the kind of opportunity this you've got in like work the best you can kind of came from um so yeah I totally understand that 100 percent yeah I don't know I remember like I don't know I just like I don't know if, if I even liked first year like it was all right but I feel like it was more for like socializing and sort of like finding your feet and getting to know everybody and mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because was... like also we were in with like the cap students, so we were doing a lot of like kind of copy type things, and it wasn't really like up my street kind of thing. But mm. um, yeah, I'd, yeah, everybody's work was that different. Like I couldn't really compare. Like I didn't really compare myself to like other people, um, and also like I had a proper like heavy kind of style when I was in like college in the first year. Like I I liked a lot of like. I don't know if I'm like jumping the gun with like the questions now, by the way, but no, no, um, no, this is all good. <laughs> this is what always um, happens anyway. So this is like this is totally normal. just going off your schedule <laughs> and just like trying to like, test you. This was just <laughs> it's just a foundation, and then everything else the flesh <laughs> comes on the bones there. So it's all yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I like a proper heavy style. Like everyone was really like, I was really into like our back and abstract expressionism and like really into expressionism so everything was really dark and like heavily painted and like a really like thick and pastel paint and stuff and lots of really heavy like charcoal drawings and things like that and then <clears throat> like they kind of liked that when I was at college like they pushed it whereas I felt like when I first went into greys like and obviously I had different shirts and everything, they were a bit like oh you need to try um, doing lots of different things like you need to push yourself more instead of like sticking to your comfort sort of style um, so yeah I was kind of being pushed out of my comfort zone and I didn't like it <laughs> so I was like kind of like mm, I don't know if I like this or not um, like I remember when I was saying something like oh our your sketchbook should be like a like a symphony type thing it should be like have loud bits and quiet bits and dynamics and all this and he's like everything you do is loud whereas you need to like quiet him down and rein it in and all this so I was like oh, okay like I didn't like that I was like I don't like this chair but then actually like after I was like oh he's probably right like <laughs> I can see what what they mean but at the same time if that's the way that you express yourself then I think they should be encouraging that surely but yeah. then of course like they're they're paid to not criticize you the worst place like the in the worst way but in yeah. a way that's like yeah like you say kind of pushing yourself out of that kind of comfort zone try and do something new but yeah it's yeah <laughs> but then, I don't know that, that was all right in like first and second year but then by third year I feel like they definitely expect you to have like a style I don't know if it's like that for design or not but I feel like in painting it was like they wanted you to kind of know what your style was like by third year know what you were doing whereas I was like didn't no, so that kind of like made their day really difficult but uh, I think they didn't expect you to have a style but they expected you to kind of have an idea anyway of what you were wanting to do because they were preparing you for fourth year saying that yeah. fourth year is the year that you have to know what you're doing you have to kind of understand yourself and just know and that on my side I think it was I just didn't know what I wanted to do like I enjoyed yeah. a little dabble in illustration a little dabble in graphic design and <laughs> a, like photography a little bit and then events came along and I was like oh I love doing events like I just couldn't cubbyhole myself in one thing and yeah. then when they were talking about styles and stuff and I was like oh gosh I just do stuff I don't I don't know if I have a style um but I think fourth like going to Germany and then coming back and then working on stuff I can see that I have a, a a style coming through but it's more of a mm. conceptual idea of like 2d and 3d mixing together but do you think you have that now that you you have your style and you're like yeah I think that's that's what I do um I don't know because I think it's one of those things that just take time like obviously the longer you do it the more like you get comfortable with what you're like what you like doing and what kind of things you like using and um, and that's probably how your style sort of develops but I was definitely the same as you in third year like I kept like I remember one of the shirts saying to me like something about where you keep picking up different styles like jumping about all over the place kind of thing and it was just because I didn't know like what I was wanting to do like mm -hmm. um and I, I also like I am the type of person like I'm quite so it's kind of boastful but I am quite good at drawing so like I can just pick up anything like style or like I can see somebody else's style and copy it quite easily That's actually funny. I think that's <laughs> the bad thing because it meant that I was just like I don't know just jumping from like one thing to the other and just like mm -hmm. I don't know nothing made sense kind of thing 
but th- th- I think that's like I struggled in fourth year as well like it took me quite a while um, and it wasn't until I started doing like collages and things like that that everything kind of started to come together but it didn't come together till right until the very end which was like very stressful <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> yeah. so, so do you want to discuss kind of what inspires you and your soon to be like decided style kind of thing that you have set on for now yeah I mean I I definitely have more of a style now than what I did have like fourth year definitely helped me quite a lot like um like I was looking at a lot of like outsider art and that kind of thing like sort of naive sort of styles Mm -hmm. so um a collage definitely helped me a lot doing that because it meant that I was keeping everything a bit sort of like flatter and tidier like everything was a bit more tidier instead of like my usual sort of style like of drawing so then it kind of helped me compositionally and then subject matter sort of came more like after that so I think I'm sort of carrying on that kind of route but then at the same time this is another thing I wanted to talk about like obviously you develop this sort of style when you're at uni and the tutors like help you with that and then they praise you when you do like something they like or whatever but then it's a different kind of story when you leave art school and you're like more concerned with this sort of business side of it and just trying to sell things because like that style that I had at uni which was a lot of like feminism women stories about women um stuff like that like maybe people don't want to buy that kind of stuff like, that's how I felt so, with my portfolio I was like oh shit no <laughs> <want> this <laughs> It didn't really, like, it, was so, it seemed so stupid now, but it didn't dawn on me until, like, after I'd done it. Like, until, like, I'd done all my degree show work and it was all up in the walls and then I looked at it and I was like, and then you see everybody else's, like, de- degree show spaces and you're like, shit, maybe people are <laughs> going to want to buy this. Like, um, <laughs> like, oh, it was interesting to me and, like, it was important for me to make it because I'm interested in it. And, and I'm, like, passionate about it. But, like, somebody else looking at it might not be, like, they might not be that interested that they want to buy it so it's a bit like it's finding that balance as well it's another thing that I'm sort of struggling with now is like doing sort of more commercial artwork instead of the artwork that I'm like proper interested in like and really want to do kind of thing like I don't know if like other people are feeling like that as well or not I don't know but I'm sure we'll find out after this is put out (laughs) I think (laughs) I uh, I can kind of relate to that as well with the kind of work that I was making. Like it was just a bit a bit rag, like a bit all over the place. And, <laughs> but it was what I enjoyed doing. Like I really enjoyed doing it. Um, mm-hmm. But once I came out of uni and I was starting to apply for jobs, I was like, "Gosh, I'm not getting anything. I'm just getting rejected <laughs> from rejection." I was like, "I need to do something." Mm-hmm. To and so I, I started to feel like you, where I was like, oh, maybe I need to just do a bit more of what everyone else is doing. But it's just kind yeah. of glad that it's got to that place because I think one of the things that kind of drove me to wanting to make this was to try and encourage people to actually embrace themselves and embrace what they do and their style because yeah. that is what's quite special. I think that's important as well. It's what distinguishes you from other people um but it is hard when for example we love women and we want to like Mm. do work on that like that's only a very small target market if you will that's only a small amount of people that are gonna go for that so it's trying to yeah like you say find the balance between doing what you enjoy but also making sure you're able to earn money at the end of the day yeah, like, I think, because as well, I'm really, like, I love doing life drawings, so, like, <clears throat> I think people think it's a bit weird when they see, like, all of these pictures of naked women, and, I don't know, like, because that's what I like drawing, and, like, I'm interested in, like, the human form, mm. I, I don't know, there's just something about life drawing that I really, really enjoy doing, and I really like, but then, at the same time, I think people kind of look at you and think, mm, she, she's a bit odd, why does she keep drawing so many <laughs> naked women all the time, like, strange. 
<laughs> so the other day I, I had um a uh, instagram page follow me and it was literally all clitorises like all <laughs> literally just vaginas and i was like i appreciate that i think but i at the same time it's it's kind of good because it's just one exposing the natural body and two just like I think clitorises especially have a bit of a bad name. They're all a bit like, ugh, ugly. Whereas this was just like, hey, it's actually really beautiful. Like if you yeah. look at it <laughs> in this mm -hmm. in this different way, it's just Yeah, ugly. I know what you mean. That happened to me as well. Like one time, like like when I first started my Instagram, I was posting a lot more like uh, I don't know, like feminist kind of artwork and I was getting all these weird like art pages about sex like following all this shit on instagram and i was just like um, okay this is not really the vibe that i was going for i wasn't really wanting my like work to be like porn but okay <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> yeah no i can relate to that one <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit about women and that you really find the topic very interesting kind of how and where did this begin Definitely, I feel like all the way through my life I've always been kind of wondering like like about gender roles and like why women get treated a certain way compared to men um, I don't know if it's just because like there's a lot of in sort of rural areas like where I live there's a lot of traditionalism like you know like the wife stays home and like cooks whereas the man goes out and works and just like stuff like that and even when I was little I used to kind of wonder like why like why is that why does she not get to go out and work and why does she not get to do her own thing and then also even just little things like I remember when I was at school like seeing like newspapers with like page three women in them and things and like being like why why are women like the ones that are like scantily like clad on these like newspapers with like their boobs out and stuff like you like I don't know and I find it quite disgusting like just the fact that you know that men are going to be like looking at them and it just made me think like oh, like I don't know like what like what way do like people perceive women like how are they viewed like when um I don't know this is the way that they get sort of looked at and treated and then it definitely got worse I felt like when I went to uni as well like I, I don't know I thought going to like art school everybody would be quite open-minded and um like what should they were but then I also felt like the way that women or like girls got treated was a bit well in my experience was a bit shit as well like um certainly like first year i felt like there's a sort of vibe i definitely noticed i don't know if you noticed or any other girls like in at uni like i think it's a university thing like if anybody else noticed it as well like there's a lot of like older sort of guys sort of prey a little bit on vulnerable first years like girls like just starting they're obviously young they're a bit naive like I definitely was very naive when I first came to uni because obviously I'm from like a rural area I didn't really know what was going on like I wasn't used to like city life and that kind of thing um, and I just felt like there was a sort of vibe that like they were just interested in trying to get with as many like girls as possible trying to like sleep with a load of first year girls and like I don't know just I mean, obviously, my opinion is different to other people, and like how I viewed it was different. Like other girls might be like, they think that's fine, that's normal, that's fair enough, that's their own sort of boundaries. But for me, it was like, I didn't like the way they were like almost like looking at you like a piece of meat, like some sort of competition, like, mm, like almost I like praying on you. I hate that. Like I don't know, I don't know if it was just me or if I'm just like making it up, but that's like certainly like how I felt like, um. I just felt there was a lot of like older because obviously art school as well there's a lot of girls and not very many boys so I don't know if they just go a bit crazy like um like I don't know they've got their pick kind of thing so they can just do what they want but I don't know I didn't like that I felt like they didn't treat you with any respect like I don't know they didn't treat you like a proper person that's like I don't know that's just the way I felt about it I don't know about any other girls but mm. um yeah, so that's that's how I definitely got a lot more interested, like in the subject and um like talking about it and like even when I was at college, I used to ask the church like, oh, do you know that much about feminine like feminism or feminist art? And they were just like, no. 
like I always had like male tutors as well, and I never really had that many female tutors. So like, I don't I don't know if that had something to do with it as well. Like like when I also when I first went to uni, there wasn't there wasn't any female painting tutors. It was all sort of middle aged men as per usual. Mm-hmm. Um, same in the design industry as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Didn't expect anything else. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it is getting better now, though, to be fair, because there was a lot of, like, artists in residence. I've noticed the, like, at Grace, every time they have an artist in residence, most of the time it's a girl. Mm. Um, like, for the painting department, anyway. And I feel like that's definitely them trying to make a conscious sort of effort. Like, oh, shit, we need a bit more, like, females in here kind of thing. Mm. And a lot of the time, like, they go on to, like, do a bit of like teaching or be a tutor for a while or um like and then Lindsay like she was a tutor I really liked it um uni she obviously went on to be a tutor so it did get better like by the time I was in fourth year there was more like female tutors um and I thought they were really good like I, I liked having like a different perspective as well from them rather than just being like the same mm like tutors all the time kind of thing so yeah that was definitely a big part of it like a big part of why I did like that subject for my dissertation and why I did the that sort of subject for my paintings as well Mm -hmm. yeah pretty much on the same level as you there as (laughs) well um I was just so annoyed I was like why am I not seeing like women part of the like I don't know there was a lot of competitions that we did for briefs and things like that um and the judges would pretty much all be men and then when you go to these events who are the speakers all men it's like where are the it's like I just don't get it and then a majority of the students were female and then a majority of the folks working in industry were men so it's like yeah where are they going that's like, for graduation? That's basically what my dissertation was about. Like I was like, how come there's so many girls in art school? Like the girls are definitely outnumbering the boys. But then afterwards, like, where do they all go? Like what happens to them? Like what jobs are they getting? Like, how come there's no like high up sort of roles with females in them? Like what I was a bit like, what's actually going on? And it made me wonder about my future as well. I was feel like, oh, what's gonna happen to me kind of thing. So or and then another thing as well that I know it's when I was in Aberdeen was um a lot of these weird, creepy sort of photographers going about, and they were all men. I've and heard. they messaged you like randomly on Instagram, being like, "Oh, um, I like your style," or oh, "I like your selfies," or whatever. Do you want to do a photo shoot? And you're just like, "No, I don't want, <laughs> don't yeah. want to do a photo shoot with you. You have to look great." Like, I don't know. Like, it's not like I just didn't think that was normal. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's the way it works. Like in photography, I don't know, but. I just like something kind of dodgy about it so um no I've definitely actually, heard of um some dodgy photographers specifically in Aberdeen um there's a I'm pretty sure a studio that's like one of the girls in Comdes a few years ago had um a placement with them and they were like yeah so we're going to do this full shoot and you're going to be the model and she was like um, <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> And it was like a really weird photo shoot that they were planning on doing. And she was like, I don't feel com- comfortable with this at all. And then she ended up yeah. meeting early. But it's good to her. <laughs> I know. I, but um, yeah, they, I think, and I remember reading um, a few months ago, there was a photographer renowned on Instagram, American, and he would go um, messaging these people asking for photo shoots and things and would end up just completely doing awful things to them um and just like treating them awfully and um like not paying them either maybe for some of the like just treating them like a piece of meat let's say yeah um and then in the messages as well he would be like abusing them as well it's just awful um mm-hmm. and he made the newspapers and things like that just because of what an absolute nutcase he was so yeah. obviously not all photographers yeah, no, <laughs> are are like that. but yeah I've heard I've heard stories I've definitely heard them yeah like I remember I had one 
photographer actually messaged me on Instagram. He was, I can't remember his name, but he was doing like a thing where he was taking portraits of people like every day and then put in like a big exhibition on like as like one big sort of image oh, and it was quite yeah. cool. I can't remember what his name was though, but he like, I remember him talking to me about like, cause he was interested in what I was doing my artwork about and things and discussing my work and his point of view as a photographer, like a male photographer, um, he basically was just like, oh, I feel like um, he doesn't know whether he's contributing to the sort of, that sort of power play between like, you've got like a naked woman in front of you and you're taking a picture of her. And he was like, I don't know whether that's right or not. It was like, sometimes I do get a feeling when I'm taking a picture of somebody that it feels wrong. Like, and he doesn't know whether it's like contributing to that sort of objectification or whether it is actually just like art and if it's okay kind of thing. And I was just like, I actually didn't know how to like answer him because I was like, I don't know. I don't really know. Like, I don't know what the answer is to that kind of. But I can see like why he felt like that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is hard. I think the answer on my side would be it's the intention behind why, like, yeah. they're doing the photos. I think that's where the yeah, the yeah, this is fine, and the no, this is not okay comes from. Yeah. I think it's like to do with the type of pictures they're taking as well like sometimes when you see like the photographs that some of these are like photographers are taking and they're like full-on sort of like the woman has like nothing on but it's like how, sort of like how you take it as well if it's like artfully sort of tastefully done and it's also obviously to do with like um like if she's gave permission mm -hmm. like consent as well obviously like if, if it's okay but um yeah, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, it's definitely a grey area, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Even I don't really know what to say to it. Like, <laughs> it's a tough yeah. one. Um, but I'm glad that we're talking about it because yeah. it's just lifting up a problem and an issue that's not really talked about. So this is yeah. all good. It's funny how like one sort of thing that you're talking about can lead you on to something else because then now I'm also sort of thinking about like obviously like a lot of my dissertations about how I feel like women don't have that much power like it's to do with like patriarchy they don't have that much control um like obviously they have different roles in life and people treat them differently and blah 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 especially in the art industry like specifically but then one of the sort of things I wasn't sure about was like do they have like a sort of sense of power when it comes to like that kind of thing like obviously Instagram's a big thing now and a lot of it is women taking pictures of themselves and selfies and like pictures of them in like bikinis like on the beach and all this and I feel like it I don't know if that's like a good kind of like is that a sort of power for them as well like a sort of sense of control like it becomes like a sort of competitive thing like who can get the most likes and stuff from boys and like that was another thing I didn't really like as well like when I was at uni I felt like there was a lot of kind of competition between girls mm. I don't know it's hard to describe like I felt it but I didn't know how, like I don't know how to like describe it out loud like sort of like competition between girls who's the prettiest and who can dress the best and um I don't know who can get the most attention from boys and stuff like that. I feel like that was another thing I didn't really like. Look, it's not just uni, like, in particular, just in general with girls, it's just something I don't like. Mm. Um, and it also makes me think, because I spoke about this video when I was uh, in my dissertation, it was like Rachel McLean's video, it was called Make Me Up, and it's like this really weird, like, because obviously she does really weird videos, like, kind of conceptual sort of stuff, but like, as she plays all the characters in it. But there was one called Make Me Up and it was like this weird, I watched it really late at night one time in like fourth year, like it was just happened to be on like BBC4 or something like that. And I actually really enjoyed it. It was like really long, but I was like this like the whole way through. And it was like, um, these girls, like they're all living in this weird like dream house. And then they sort of like, they look like Barbies, but they're not. And they're all dressed up like perfect and the hair's like perfect. And they all have these competitions, like who's, 
the best at doing makeup and hair and who's the best at looking after babies and who's the best at cooking and all this like who's the best like female kind of thing and then whoever doesn't win they like kill them and eat them or something really like twisted like that Whoa, <laughs> but, that took an unexpected turn <laughs> just thought it was really cool and then it was like the way they were all eating at this like dinner table and but they were eating like literally like thin air like they weren't eating anything at one point and it was a sort of comment on how like um you know like the, it's a big insecurity for women like what they eat and like how fat they are and stuff like that like I don't know I just thought it was really interesting yeah I think that's really cool the fact that uh I mean it's picking up on all of the small things that well small things that are going on in society and the fact that they're like whoever loses we're gonna eat like that quite a, I don't know, it's quite oh, an right. interesting way to go about that. Like, if you lose, if you're not part of what society expects of you, yeah. then you're just chucked. You're like, not. Yeah, you're going to get left behind, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Literally just eaten away, like, <laughs> objectified, really. If, yeah. they're, if they're changing it into food, it's like, it's an object. You're just easy to dispose that's quite an interesting mm -hmm. way to look at it yeah like I mean it comes back to like the male gaze again doesn't it and like it always comes back to that really um and like women getting objectified and how they get treated like like this is another reason I wanted to do a lot of my paintings about stories about women because I thought it was a good thing to like obviously it's a difficult thing to combat but I thought the only way that I could really approach it was if I made these stories about women and made their sort of story more important than how they look mm. so that it became more about the subject rather than the object if that makes sense mm. like the women are like real people with like interesting stories with thoughts and feelings and everything rather than just being an object to look at and like just the usual like how women are always like the nude sort of woman within the painting rather than being the sub the sort of main subject of the story within it mm. I don't know it's hard to describe I get you though I think um I remember I think your main painting at the degree show and it was the women holding the guy's head <laughs> I love that because of the fact that it was like switching up a little bit and I remember reading your dissertation and you mentioned it and it was based on a painting I can't remember who by Judith and the Head of Hall of Ferns it was by Gentileschi yes the um, Italian painter yeah exactly and the fact that typically that kind of um like style or um composition is seen as like a man doing it like showing the power yeah. of things but the fact that you had made it a woman doing it was just really interesting i really yeah thought it was really good everybody must be like scared of me like oh god what's she gonna do next like <laughs> <laughs> that's a way of getting some power <laughs> yeah Oh. It's kind of that's kind of sad. The only way I can get any power in my life is through <laughs> painting. <laughs> but that's quite interesting. Even that, like the fact that art has been your way of gaining that way of control and yeah, having... it's like I, yeah. I think I've definitely got a thing about authority. Like I feel like I wish I had more authority in the life than I actually do. But um, yeah, like. I did a lot of like personal kind of stories as well when I was start 40 and it didn't really work out like it just didn't look very good um, and sometimes I think doing like really personal work um, comes across as a bit childish like a bit I don't know not sophisticated enough so that's how I sort of ended up latching myself onto these kind of like stories like Judith and the Head of Hall of Parents and things and then like I could identify with the stories but the story wasn't about me. <laughs> so like that's definitely how I was working in fourth year. Mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of stories. Like the fact that you can 
find a little bit of yourself in the story within that within a character or the situation there's something that you can um resonate with um mm -hmm. i think that's why i enjoyed your paintings because of the fact that there were stories in it and then reading your dissertation as well like getting all that background knowledge into it as well i was like oh that's brilliant the fact that she's <laughs> managed to tie all of that together in such a beautiful way in painting yeah. so. i don't know it wasn't easy like i found it really hard to like because i was like i had all these things in my head that i felt about like women and representation and objectification and everything that i felt but i didn't know how to like get it across in an image and i think that's always what i've struggled with like getting it across in, like your whole story in like one single image and then um, yeah what was i saying i totally forgot <laughs> <laughs> I think you managed to do it very well. I think you should be proud of what you did. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Obviously, at this moment in time, it's a bit of a weird situation. Yeah. <laughs> We're on lockdown, but how yeah. has that affected you in your daily life and your creative practice? Uh, actually, I don't know if it's made that big a difference. Like, obviously, I've got more time to draw and paint and think about I guess it's a good time to reflect on like what the work you've done so far uh, and what you want to do in the future it's gave me a lot of time to think about what I want to do with my life in general because obviously I've like when did we even graduate last year is it last year now mm -hmm. feels like yesterday and yes. um, yes. yeah so yeah I'm sort of just thinking about what I want to do with my life and my career and that kind of thing because I, I don't know at the moment <laughs> I mean I'm thinking about I don't know it's kind of difficult I was thinking about doing teaching maybe I'm not sure <gasps> um, okay. I had it sort of like like I had it planned before all this quarantine stuff happened that I was going to volunteer at the school I used to go to in the art department because I know like all the teachers and everything and they were quite happy for me to do it and then I was literally like about to go and then all of this happened in the school <laughs> school shot so um yeah it just kind of feels weird it just feels like everything's on hold kind of thing mm. um like i don't know it's not a nice feeling and, and also it kind of makes you feel a bit anxious because you don't know when everything's going to go back to normal um but i don't know i think i just have to the only thing i'm doing just now is just making work like i feel like oh as long as i can keep making work and sell as much as I can and um like I was sort of aiming to have like a solo kind of exhibition as well mm, cool um, yeah and I'll, I feel like that's probably not gonna happen now just because unless it's a virtual one but I have seen um, a few ones um so far it's quite a good idea but yeah it's just yeah. can you let us into a little taster of the kind of stuff that you're making at the moment or is it top <laughs> secret of it like no <laughs> um well to be honest i've literally just been doing commissions i've only really just started doing like my own work so like um like the paintings i've been doing recently were like landscapes and things like stuff i'm not used to doing like at all but now i'm going back to doing like my own stuff and i'm just trying to take it a bit slowly like getting back into my old sort of subject matter and um nothing too serious like nothing too feminist heavy just at the moment because i'm worried that people people aren't going to be interested people aren't going to buy it <laughs> so yeah that's that's what i'm doing um and having like it's, it's so weird like working at home as well instead of being at uni like i feel like i find it so much harder to work because i get easily distracted <laughs> so, like, <laughs> <in the club. laughs> so like also when you were at uni it was like going to work every day like you got up in the morning you got the bus to uni you did your work, you had your lunch, you did your work, but you had a sort of schedule, whereas now you can just get up whenever you want. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, you just like end up convincing yourself, like, oh, I need a snack, I better stop, or oh, I better like go for a walk, get some fresh air, or, and then you just end up not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. As long, I'm, as long as I do like one draw in a day, I'm quite happy. <laughs> so, like, when it comes to preparing for your final painting, is there a process that you go through or is it more of just like this is what I'm going to paint I'm just going to go straight in? Um, well it usually starts off with like an idea first like I always have something that I want to say before I start and um, 
yeah, I always have like something to say and then I have to sort of think about how I'm going to externalise it, whether it's going to be like a single image or like a story or um, I don't know, it could be anything really like for a while I was doing like big sort of storyboards like at the start of fourth year, they didn't really work out, they looked really bad but um, yeah and then usually I sort of like as I was saying earlier, I try and find like a person or a story or something to sort of latch it onto to, like to tell what I want to see through and then um, yeah I, I look at a lot of like old really old historical kind of paintings as well that's been helping me quite a lot usually I try my best to try and use female artists as much as I can and um, like be influenced by female artists look at female artists work and try and work with other female artists as much as possible because I feel like that's the only way to try and shift the sort of balance a wee bit so that it's not just, you know, because when you're in school you learn, like literally all the paintings you learn about is like most of the time they're all done by men mm. and it just gets a bit kind of, I don't know, you just get a bit sick of, <laughs> a bit sick of the same sort of perspective and, um, but obviously the only reason for that is just because like women weren't allowed to paint really like years and years and years ago so mm -hmm. but um yeah try and look at as many female contemporary sort of artists as I can and that always helps and usually it'll be it could be a painting it can be photography it can be like a musician it could be a music lyric it could be like fashion it could be like literally anything well I think that's all the questions covered um if there's I'm anything sorry if I was like rambling or if I just spoke absolutely rubbish by the way no definitely not it was all good stuff it as long as something interesting even a tiny little thing that would be fine <laughs> <laughs> it was good for me i enjoyed the chat um i'm sure other people will as well because there's things that we can all relate to so yeah even just to start like a bit of discussion it's quite interesting to hear what other people's thoughts and opinions are so for sure. Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say a massive thank you again for agreeing to do this because I know it's a bit of a scary time but you did an amazing job and <laughs> things that needed to be talked about so and thank you for being so honest as well because that's also a scary thing to do so yeah I really appreciate that. That's all right thanks for having me. Pleasure. Anytime.